Looking at the astrology for the month of November, December, and January 2022. And it's going to be hard, folks. It's already been hard, but it's going to get worse. In fact, by January, I would be very surprised if we don't have a major outbreak of some kind of violence either war between states or <laughs> that pack of birds always hunts together. They're really cool. Uh, or some kind of uh, civil violence, uprising. So there's already violence breaking out in Ukraine and Poland border. And things like that are going to pop up all over the place as the tension is ratcheted up toward the end of the year and into the beginning of next year. What's going on? What's driving this? Mainly the lunar eclipse two days from now in Taurus, two degrees of Taurus, which is the star Algol. Algol is known as the head of Medusa in the constellation Perseus. You know, Perseus killed the, the demoness Medusa with the snakes for hair, you know. And uh, so that star is the head of Medusa, the demon, demoness. So this is a very violent star. And any astrological event that lines up with or opposes this star is going to be uh, lead to very destructive consequences. So, you know, many times wars will start or people will be assassinated or, you know, in a more mundane personal setting, relationships will break. Uh, there will be controversies, uh, whether real or imagined. And there will be uh, just, just a lot of problems seemingly popping up out of nothing. But in fact, the seeds of those problems were planted long ago. And the action of the eclipse is simply to remove the secrecy that's covering them and bring them out into the light. The lunar eclipse is followed two weeks later by a solar eclipse, which is opposed to Algol. So it's going to be a very interesting season. We've all been feeling repressed, oppressed, and depressed over the last month or so by the heavy transits going on. And this eclipse is going to bring everything to a head. Now, the interesting thing is, although the eclipse sets up a certain pattern, that pattern doesn't manifest right away. But when other transits, especially the moon, create aspects with that eclipse degree, that will bring on the results and we'll be feeling them and seeing them in the world. So is there any good news? <laughs> yeah. The eclipse is also trying Pluto. Pluto, of course, is the, uh, the planet of the masses, mass media, mass movements. Uh, religions, political movements, and like that, uh, beyond nation states and structures like that, but humanity at large. So this is a really good time. Uh, Jupiter being trine, Pluto, 
going into the beginning of next year is a good time to examine the mass uh, opinions and beliefs that cause the uh, different explosions, sometimes literally, that blow up around these topics having to do with secrets and uh, their revelations. Now, anybody who's been on the internet once or twice <laughs> has heard about different conspiracy theories, that there is a secret uh, government beyond the governments that manipulates everything. Well, a lot of information is going to be coming out on this specific topic because, again, Pluto is involved and also Uranus. So Uranus and Jupiter uh, are going to be squared by the eclipse. So that means the innovations and uh, revelations coming out of these eclipses, the lunar eclipse day after tomorrow and the solar eclipse in about two weeks, are going to have to do with the mass mind, mass beliefs, and the uh, secrets that are being held from us by the government, by the media, and by the elites. So, of course, this is going to produce some real uh, explosive events. Could be wars are going to start. Governments like to start wars when their legitimacy is questioned or when their uh, economy is in trouble. And so, of course, not only in the U.S., but everywhere now, there's tremendous inflation, supply chain problems, and many other difficulties with the economy. Uh, most economies are leveraged very highly in debt. And it's possible that one or more countries may default. And also some big corporations may default on their debt, uh, especially in China. And of course, China is uh, pursuing conflicts on several fronts in India, in uh, North China, with Japan, with Taiwan especially, any of those could flare up into an actual shooting war because China wants to cover up the fact that its demographics are very weak and getting weaker all the time and that its debt situation is out of control. So they may just have to start a war to uh, cover this up. But you know, China's not the only one. So it could break out anywhere, at conflicts, uh, demonstrations, protests, violence in the streets, um, that kind of thing will happen. But in the long term, as, as Jupiter comes through Scorpio and into Capricorn, uh, it's going to mean transformation in the society to a new paradigm, to a new level, where a lot of things that have been covered up in the past are going to become common knowledge, not just among conspiracy theorists or the people who do deep research, but the public at large is going to become aware of these things. What's going to be the result? I think we are renegotiating the social contract, not only with the government, but with big institutions like banks, you know, uh, distributed finance, cryptocurrencies, NFTs. See, these are all signs of rebellion against the financial order, the structure of financial control that governments use to regulate the society. And in other words, society is, is uh, in a stage of rebellion against the government. Remember back in 1960s? Well, a lot of you won't, but I do. <laughs> what happened was the government uh, 
to catch up with Russia in the space race. They put a lot of money and effort into education in the 50s and early 60s. But then what happened? They had a lot of well-educated people who started looking at things and going, wait a minute, this isn't cool. This isn't right. And so the counterculture was born. And so the counterculture was a movement, a mass movement, and uh, mainly a youth movement to rebel against the government and the structures of society that have been put in place to manage the population, to manage the culture, actually. So the CIA got involved, and there's a lot of evidence that they engineered the spread of drug use and uh, uh, various strategic moves against the family and alternative families, like communes and collectives to break up these movements. So they got people hooked on drugs and then busted them. Selective enforcement. Uh, if there's anybody who got through the 60s without being busted, <laughs> they were probably you know, working for the government in some capacity. Uh, I could think of a number of names, but I'm not going to mention any of them now. It's, it's up to you to do the research. We're in a similar scene now. Because now, the Internet has opened wide the floodgates of knowledge. Anybody with a phone, which is a lot of people, the, more, the majority of people on the planet now has a smartphone can look things up on the internet. Wikipedia, and I mean, Wikipedia is only the surface. You can go deep and you can find so, so many things. Uh, so people are becoming educated without relying on the school structure. And this is producing a level of awareness in society that has never existed before. People are aware of what's going on in other countries to a degree that was never possible till now. So it's no longer possible for the government to control the information being given to the public like they did in the past. There's a way around it. Uh, yeah, there's propaganda in the news. Of course, there's tons of propaganda, tons of misinformation. But if you really want to know, there are ways to find out. At the same time, bad actors like the, the ransomware gangs operating out of Russia and places like that, North Korea, China, these rogue states that have no scruples, uh, they are causing a lot of damage to the economy and also to people's confidence that, oh, if I get an email and there's a link in it, can I, do I dare to click that link? You, know, you have to be very careful. Hover over it, read the URL, make sure it's correct, you know. And uh, also uh, phone scams are becoming very, very popular with many of these phone operators overseas where they can't really be directly prosecuted. So all these bad actors are feeding off of the same sources of information that the ethical people have to make them smarter. I mean, bad people can get smarter too. <laughs> when they do, it increases the chaos in society, reduces the level of trust. So the way out of this is to find a way to cultivate trust without building a highly repressive culture like in China with the surveillance everywhere. Uh, in the West, the surveillance is done through corporations, but government is also involved. In any case, uh, there's going to be a very strong movement against this regulation of the culture and society. It's going to be like the 60s 
in some ways, but you know, it's not the 60s anymore, so it's going to be different. Like, uh, drugs are not going to be a central issue. Uh, the legalization of drugs might be more uh, germane to the current scenario. But I think what we're going to see is people spontaneously reorganizing a lot of things, uh, cryptocurrencies, um, NFTs, DAOs, distributed online uh, organizations, and uh, so on. So many innovations will be coming at an accelerating pace. And just like the government's attempt to stop hackers, it's going to be an arms race where as soon as they develop a defense against it, another strategy is going to pop up. I don't think the cat can be put back in the bag. So it's going to be a wild ride. Fasten your seatbelt, hang on to your hats, and here we go into 2022. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.